the idea to do the Dusty Harrison project intrigued me because it does bring in to account the idea that the amateurs have diverged from the pro game and many people don't feel that it's the best training ground now to develop a professional fighter. And I think we might see more fighters at a young age, such as 17, going pro to learn the professional game. Also, the dynamic of the father-son relationship with the father as the lead trainer and advisor and how that moves forward in a young man's career. So we'll follow this young man's career and watch him grow as both a prize fighter and as a young man. And I always wanted him to be a boxer. But not so much to compete. I just want him to be able to fight and take care of himself. He grew up in a real rough neighborhood over in Washington, D.C. And, and I just want him to be able to fight. I always remember being one of the youngest kids. Before he could stand up, I got him throwing punches. Um, when he could walk, I bought him a little heavy bag, something you could buy at a Toys R Us. As he got a little older, I had him out front, and I'm holding the mitts for him all the time four or five years old. The neighbors, the people would ride by. They probably thought I was crazy. I got and when he was six years old, I put him in a little tough man contest at the Ritz nightclub downtown. I know I've been coming to the gym before I can remember. I've seen videos of me when I was one years old wearing a onesie, throwing punches, shadow boxing. By the time I was eight years old, I was getting comfortable as a fighter because I had already did exhibitions and had been sparring for years. So by the time my first amateur fight, I felt good. When he got eight, after being in the gym all the time, we couldn't wait. Got his, his thing on his birthday, May 21st, eight years old. He fought, I'm almost sure it was a week later. It was in the Golden Gloves. And um, he won. And he did great, and we've been going strong ever since then. His mama may have, and papa may have. God bless the child that's got his own, that's got his own. As a former pro fighter myself, uh, I see you know, so many things in Dusty that um, you know, a lot of fighters, uh, a lot of top pro fighters uh, don't have. And uh, you know, I mean, he's just ex extremely talented, uh, focused. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a humble kid. You know, he's, um, he, he doesn't have your, I guess, stereotypical uh, uh, fighter um, personality, mentality outside of the ring. I mean, he's such a, a nice and, and humble kid. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he's just just all around, you know, very talented and, and, and down to earth, uh, good, good, hardworking kid. I decided to go pro around last December, two thousand ten. Uh, that was when I finally decided. I was thinking about it after the Junior Olympics. I got third place back in June 2010. And then it was definitely set in my mind after meeting with some of the when promoters. I to go pro, people outside of the boxing community, like my family, friends, and just supporters, they, really, they were excited for me. They all wanted to know when my first fight was so they can come, they could try to watch. Inside the boxing community, everybody was judgmental, like they thought I was too young. Thought I wasn't ready, thought I should stay amateur, fight open, try for Olympics. We decided to turn pro. Well, first of all, I, I disagree with the scoring in USA Boxing. Um, before, it was generally just like the pros. It was a 2019 system where the pros was a 10 9. And they came out with the clickers, and very difficult thing to do. And I just, you know, some people get 70 something points for one round. Um, I thought if somebody got hit 70 times, that they'd be in the hospital. But then we, um, the money is another thing. In amateur boxing, it cost a fortune. When we would go to Vegas for the Golden Gloves or 
Kansas City for the Silver Gloves or the World Tournament. I even fought in Puerto Rico. But we have to pay for the flights, the hotel, the food, and all this goes on for a week straight. So it costs quite a bit of money. Um, the pros, we leave on Friday. Uh, we, we, we weigh in on Friday night. Or we fight on Saturday. And we come back Sunday. Everybody, and bar none. Uh, well, let me take that back. Ma the majority of people said, he's too young. Why are you doing this too young? You have the Olympics. He's too young and everything. Then I did listen, and, and I thought about things. But the exact same thing that people criticized him for about being too young worked for him. Um, now, being the youngest fighter in America, as a back uh, in, in favor of him, and the crowd loves it. When they announce him the youngest fighter in America, the whole place uh, went crazy. And they were negative. But um, I think after they seen his first fight, which was televised, they get a better understanding exactly what, um, what he has. And I think they agree with me now. When I decided not to represent my team, well, decided not to try to get to the Olympic team, I mean, it kind of hurt at first because that was always my goal growing up as an amateur boxer to be on the Olympic team. But I felt like it would be better for me to get a head start in the pros. I, I might have 10, 15 fights by the time I would be done with the Olympic box off. So I think this is a better decision for me. Gary Williams of Boxing Along the Beltway has covered boxing in the Washington, Baltimore region for over 25 years. Um, I wasn't overly surprised. I really wasn't. I, I didn't, because didn't, this is a guy who has been a, um, in boxing since, he was, I've seen him since he was eight years old. He has learned from the best. He has sparred with the best. And I know people say sparring and fighting and two different things, but you, you pick up something. That's why you do the sparring in the first place, to pick up tips, to pick up things to work on. And I was really not surprised when Dusty turned pro. This is a guy who has not gone through the open as far as the amateurs, but has so much experience in the amateurs that you think he's ready. I think at 16, 17 years old, I think he is, he's ready to go. Well, I, actually, actually, on Boxing on the Beltway, the, the debate was actually pretty civil in comparison to some of the other debates we've had. On, on the blog, but the debate was really whether or not it was too young. <clears throat> the debate was whether or not, you know, what are you doing with his, with his adult life? What are you doing with his, have you made him stop being a teenager? Have you, have you stunted his growth mentally because he is a teenager in a man's sport? And even though he sparred with men, he hasn't fought men before. So it wasn't really crazy. It was actually a very civil debate in that situation. Um, I, think, it, it, I think it's a useful debate because boxing is becoming a sport now, especially for the amateur situations that, unfortunately, although we try to make a big deal of the Olympics, the Olympics aren't nearly as big deal as it was, say, 20 years ago. So we're going to see a lot of guys around the country, in, in this country, turning pro at 17, 16, 17, 18 years old. And if Dusty performs well as a pro, you're going to see more of it because it's, it's going to start a trend. Going through, like, with meeting all the promoters and everything, it was kind of hectic because, like, me and my mom and dad, we didn't know who we could trust, who would really stay true to their word. So it was, it was kind of chaotic at first, but it was, it was cool. Like, it was kind of fun meeting everybody, going to all the fights that they're taking me to. I decided to sign with Prize Fight. I really liked them, like, as people and as a promoter. I liked with how they treated me like not just as a boxer, they're really helpful like with things that didn't involve boxing and I felt like they could take me far as a bo in my fighting career. Um, well we met with quite a bit. I could name six, seven right off the bat who we met with. When we met with Prize Fight, we actually went down to Memphis. We met with them in New Jersey, but we went down to Memphis to meet them. The guy, um, uh, Brian Young, took my son to a church um, and fed 200 homeless people and, and, and does all these things for the church. The guy, Russ, seemed great. Nate seemed great. They, they just seemed so family-orientated. We knew right then where, they, where we wanted to be. They treated us like family. When I came to my first pro fight, I... I've always been calm, like through my amateur fights. I kind of expected myself to get nervous, but I was relaxed. I didn't really 
get nervous. I was kind of, it was fun going to the weigh-ins and having like the, the media there and getting interviewed and everything. Everything was fun about it. My mom started crying at the weigh-ins when she saw the guy that I was fighting. And then she was so nervous like about me not having a headgear. She, we were watching uh, fighters on TV. We see people get knocked out and she just, she would start crying. She didn't want it to happen to me. I mean, seven in the ring without the headgear, I kind of liked it because I never really liked the headgear anyway. I always felt like it got in the way. Even though the other guy, you know, which only had three fights, I felt Dusty was the more experienced one with a couple hundred amateur fights. So I, I didn't feel too, and I knew, I knew, you know, deep down, prize fight was looking out for me. They, they picked the right guy for the first fight, and I'm sure they're going to pick the right one for a second. Peter in high school in September, he will become the youngest professional fighter in the United States when he steps into the ring this evening. One of the hottest amateur fighters in the world today. Most people thought a shoe in for the 2012 Olympics. Harrison turned 17 three weeks ago. So he's very young. He's going to have a foe on his hands in Alfonso Alexander. Everybody says Alexander's 0 3. It should be easy. No, Alexander's a man. Dusty Harrison's a boy. There's a difference in the strength. Dusty Harrison should outskill Alfonso Alexander all day long, but he's going to have to use that skill and let the knockouts come. This one should be a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, Fighting out of the red corner, making his professional debut, the youngest fighter in America at 17 years old. From Washington, D.C., he is Dusty Harrison. We are ready for rounds welterweight division, Dusty Harrison and Alfonso Alexander. Has advertised, you see the speed and the jab from Harrison. Oh, goodness gracious, is he 17, Greg? A nice combination and another combination by Harrison. You see the power behind these punches. And you hit it right on the head, the speed. It's blinding. Greg, in precision, it's like a package is here. This guy just came out for the first time. We've seen protégés in a lot of sports. LeBron James coming out of high school. This might be boxing's version of that. In Georgia, Quinteros. Nice body punches there and a flurry from Dusty Harrison. And the flurry hasn't stopped yet, it's still going. Up to Dusty. down. And in the clinch, the leader, no does he look like a kid that just turned 17 making his professional debut in, the, debut in the sport of boxing? Not at all, but that's when you have the vast amateur experience. When you've been in the ring training with veterans, you're beyond your numerical age. He's beyond 17 mentally and physically, obviously he's ready to go. He already knows distance. Watch where he's at when even Alexander tries to throw his jab. Look how he, he's right there at the end of it, but not able to be hit, so he can come back with his own repertoire. Big right there scored by Everybody's Dusty raved Harris. about his body work, and I haven't seen it yet. I want to see that. Round two scheduled for four. Unofficially, you're keeping a scorecard. Oh, no and question. 10-9 Dusty are the judges Harris. for this battle between Harrison and Alexander. Big body there's, shot there. There's my body work right there. Another one from Harrison. First round head, second round body. It's like, hey, I'm going to go out here and we'll show my whole game tonight. A big right, another right by Harrison. Alfonso Alexander's going to be wondering, what the heck? This kid has been nonstop. Nice combination there by Harrison. Left to the body, overhand right, got through the gloves of Alexander. Alexander against the rope, took another big body shot there. Harrison now sizing up his opponent. He doesn't leave anything back, does he, when he throws those body punches, Nate Yoder? No, everything's with power. I haven't seen him waste one punch all night. Couple of left hooks in succession. Real sweet for an uppercut in there as he lays into Harrison. Dustin's gonna make Alfonso show him something. <laughs> Big right there split the gloves. But Did Alexander still popping around. Final seconds, round number three. Alexander's been game, but Harris been, Harrison's been dominant. We're going, though, to a fourth and final round. System, system 10 nine rounds, all three, without a doubt, for Dusty Harrison. Yeah, clean shutout. I don't see how you can see it any other way. 30 27 at this point. Again, look at the pop with the left jab. Home for that hook to the body, too. I mean, it's right there behind the elbow almost. That's a big right and a in succession to the head of 
Alexander. He's going for it right here. He really wants it. He's trying to find that opening and frustrated with the gloves being up all the time. But he's got to find a way to get around that. That's part of the game. Another big right by Harrison right on the kisser of Alexander, who has proven he has a steel chin. Alexander Youth Boyd Zubrins from the 17-year-old from the D.C. area, making his pro debut. Oh, oh, big right, hand. right. Alexander, though, still on his feet, still hopping around. Ken Harrison knock out Alexander. Ten seconds to go. He heard the knock. He wants the knockout. He's going for it. He won't get it, but I'll tell you what, he got a lot of respect from the 38-year-old fighter, Dusty Harrison, with a very, very and Gentlemen, impressive... uh, the results of this welterweight bout at the DeSoto Civic Center. Judge Mullins scored at 40-36. Judge Deming scored at 40-36. And Judge Mac Thornton scored at 40-36. A unanimous decision and the first victory for this young professional, Dusty Harrison! Yeah, I felt really good. I wasn't trying too hard for a knockout. I was, I just wanted to go out and win and do my best. So I felt like I did, I was prepared to go. Yeah. Uh, as the fight went on, I got really comfortable. I felt good. I felt like I was just keep doing what I was doing. It, it's a good, it was a good debut. I don't, I'm not going to say it was a spectacular debut only because it was spectacular in the sense that he was so young in doing it. It was interesting because watching that first bout, seeing what he did, I was not surprised because I've seen him do that at the age of 12, 13 years old. The poise, the patience, the ability to put shots together, the ability to give himself space. These are things that he has done throughout his amateur career. So that was just really an extension of that. I think the toughest part of the fight was probably, uh, I think, really keeping the girls off of him after the fight. I think there were like three fights left in the show following uh, our fight, and I don't even think we made it back to the dressing room until the show was over because he had so many people following him and stopping him for pictures and autographs and uh, girls, you know, giving their number to him. So much more that I even asked. The, the promoters, I couldn't see this being topped. They guaranteed me it will. And what I mean by that is coming up to the music, uh, down the, the like somewhat tunnel, they had his name up in lights completely around the Civic Center. Um, it's on the Hasim Rockman undercard. Um, people are chanting, we want Dusty, we want Dusty. Um, people are throwing phone numbers at him. It was, it was pretty neat. I. Uh, I, I didn't think it could be topped, and uh, they assured me that it can be. You know, Dusty, Dusty's very focused. You know, he's a, he is only 17 years old, but mentally, you know, uh, he's a grown man, and, and he's focused, and he knows uh, what he has to do to continue in this journey and to uh, continue to achieve his, his goals and dreams. Um, I'd probably get myself in trouble for this because... I am married, and um, he was born one time, but that probably was the most exciting time of my entire life. I'm 51 years old. I, I, I don't remember anything being that excited in my life. But, you know, watching his hand be raised, watching him perform. Um, in the corner, if I were to tell him to do something different, it would have been wrong. He, he did just about everything perfect. It, it was great. You know, people ask me that, and, and I kind of, sometimes I hold back and say what I want because I don't want to be embarrassed myself or look like I'm a little overreacting. Um, I don't want him to be just a, a, a world champion. You know, I, I got these high hopes. I want him to be the best of all time. I'm, I'm not cutting nothing short. I, I want him to be the best ever. I, you know, I wouldn't be doing it if I, I didn't want that. You know, I, I want to be the best of all time.